Okay, guys. Let's have a conversation, a little one-on-one -on, -one on medical from your favorite ex-nurse, okay? First of all, let me explain to you that right now there's a big controversy over whether or not COVID-19 is airborne or not, okay? So I don't think most people from what I'm seeing and what I'm hearing understand what this is. There are, what we're going to be talking about here is there's two kinds of transmission that are interesting or probably that what they're discussing at this point. One is called droplet contagion and the other one is airborne contagion, okay? Now, when you go to the hospital and let's say somebody has an infection and you remember when you go in their room, but before you, there's a little cart there before their room and you have to put on the, the gloves and the mask and the yellow um, gown, you know that? Those almost always, well, they are always, droplet or contact contagions, okay? You walk into it, it's a regular room, but you just have to put clothes and stuff on, and they really prefer that you don't touch the patient or the bed or anyone, you know, within six feet around the patient. That's contact or droplet contagions that are in that room. An airborne contagion is number one a pure airborne contagion can only be a virus okay because viruses are teeny 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 tiny so when you think of a bacteria when you're looking at a bacteria in a microscope think of a bacteria being as big as my fist okay big tight big 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 now think of a virus as being as tiny as a drop of water next to my fist okay Bacteria, fist, drop of water virus, okay? Viruses are teeny, 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 tiny. So if you've got a contagious, something that's contagious, and it's bacterial, it can only be droplet, all right? So that means if you cough or you sneeze or whatever, this will come out of those air from your, your mouth, and it will go out five or six feet and then it drops, thus droplet. Cough, five or six feet, drop, okay? What happens if something is airborne and it's gonna be, well, virus, well, we're just talking about the virus, viruses, and that's what we're talking about, the potential that COVID-19 is an airborne virus. Now I'm gonna take you back to the hospital. Have you ever seen those rooms that are they're self-enclosed. They're self-enclosed rooms. Uh, maybe you haven't because these probably are big hospitals. They are what we generally put TB, tuberculous patients, in. Okay? And what happens with these people is if they cough or sneeze or even breathe, then the virus is on the product that comes out of their mouth and it floats around in the air. Just floats. Floats around up there. And what happens, these rooms are, are self, they're, they're hooked up separate from the system of the um, air conditioning heating systems in hospitals. They're completely separate because that air contagion, if you don't have them completely separate, that air contagion virus or bug of whatever it is, will go up into the uh, ventilator system and it will feed down through the rest of the hospital now if you've watched any of these outbreak type movies you've seen this that is air it does not help number one if you are five or six feet away from an air contagion within a building it's just circulating it's just circulating it's just circulating okay so if it is droplet um Okay, you want to be five or six feet away. But if this thing is airborne, and I'm not going to say anything more about what, what is what, I'm just giving you a lesson on what airborne viruses are. Airborne means floats in the air. Going out five feet and dropping is droplet contagion. Those are two separate things. Now, let's have a lesson on masks. <laughs> if you're dealing with a virus that's being transported via droplet, then standing outside of a five or six foot range from somebody who is sneezing and coughing, you don't need a mask at all because it's going to go five or six feet and then it's going to drop to the ground. If you are 
in a room with somebody who is coughing and sneezing an airborne virus, then no, then they're, it's going to be floating around in the air, right? It's going to be floating around on the air. So yeah, not good. Not good at all. So now let's talk about masks. Those masks that you guys are wearing, these floppy masks that are like, like on movies where you tie it at the top and tie it at the bottom and they're cloth across here, those are made for droplet contagions of bacteria, bacteria droplets. Now, given the fact that they don't know whether it's airborne or not, I am suggesting that if you are going to worry about whether you should wear a mask or not, I would probably lean towards the airborne. And those floppy masks that you see, they do not block airborne. You have to have a very certain mask. It's those ones that look like shells that are hard and they have to be right up next to your skin. Anybody that's even got one single hair that takes it away from the skin, has got an opening for that airborne virus to get through to your breathing. Which is why when you see these movies, the CDC wears the big, the big things with the respirators on the back, which is the only true way of protecting yourself from an airborne virus, okay? Airborne viruses, tuberculosis, you know, those tuberculosis. Remember the tuberculosis days? Yeah, that's what we're, that's what they're talking about. They're talking about tuberculosis type si si systems. But the kind of mask that is just flopping around in your face and it's a cloth and it's not being tied closely is not going to protect you from an airborne virus. It's just not. It's just going to go right under it and you're going to slurp it right in. It has no protection whatsoever. But keep in mind, if you're going to wear a respirator, mask that will protect you from an airborne virus that has to be right next to your face. And on top of that, when you wear it and go somewhere where it might be, when you leave that place, you've got to discard it because that airborne virus is now on the cover of that mask and cannot be cleaned off, it has to be disposed of. And according to uh, many people, it needs to be burned. Okay. So hopefully that will clarify some of this craziness so if you're outside in an open area way past six feet from anybody turn away from anybody who's coughing and sneezing you will be fine for everybody who cannot do that um well everything is going great <laughs> Okay, that's it for this one, guys. Love you bunches, and I'll see you later. Bye now.